We will be talking about Gina Carano, Pedro Pascal, Star Wars Theory for just a little bit, uh, Lucasfilm, and Star Wars. So that's the summary of what's going to be uh, what's going to be happening. So <laughs> thank you very much for being part of this. Uh, we have Gina Carano, and just as an update of what's happening is, I believe yesterday, one of the things that she posted was, this is just the beginning. Welcome to the rebellion. Uh, retweeting a quote from Ben Shapiro or commenting on, they can't cancel us if we don't let them. Hashtag Gina Corona is uncancelled. Memberships, da 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 That Gina Corona will be after having been fired from Lucasfilm um, and Disney for a double standard firing because she was, let's just say, right-leaning, because you're not on the left, uh, with Pedro Pascal not being fired from the same type of political tweets. Pedro Pascal's were much worse on Twitter. And Gina Carano's was just pointing out the, the ridiculousness of unpersoning somebody not unfollowing unpersoning somebody you're not a person therefore you don't have a rights if you're uh, if you voted for donald trump then you must be a racist bigot homophobic neo-nazi white supremacist and again gina's was much more tame saying if you keep doing that to people it was much easier for the government to come in and actually uh, uh round up the jews in world war ii because not because everybody started hating upon them and it was a morally good thing to do to hate on them from your neighbors. That's what happened, for anybody who doesn't know what was happening. With Gina Carano, um, there's not much other than that of that she's going to be joining Daily Wire. Daily Wire has was originally a conservative media co uh, commentary company, and they moved where each individual commentator, uh, conservative commentator, moved to their own YouTube channel, moved uh, to their own separate places. They're still connected, but they wanted to just uh, develop the Daily Wire as being a media company for, I would say, specifically conservative uh, movies, uh, conservative media. Uh, I, th I believe that's one of the things that they were trying to do in the last six months, and they just kept progressively uh, manipul uh, molding their company to do such. Gina Carano got fired. Ben Shapiro gave her a call. Boom, they're now back in business. Or Gina Carano's back in business, and Ben Shapiro of The Daily Wire has gotten a great, great following because of all the support with Gina Carano. It's really good. Hope much success for her, and I really hope that I will be interested in the movie. Sometimes I'm not interested in the movie, but I still want you to actually succeed. It's just how it goes. I'm a, I'm persnickety with the type of content that I watch. Doesn't mean the content that I watch is good. It's just fun or interesting for me. Like, I love the TV show Psych. I'm actually binge-watching it right now. I'm on episode 8, I think, of season 3. I'm going to be watching that before tonight, and then... Hopefully try to get as many episodes as in for the rest of this week, or tomorrow since tomorrow's Sunday. Anyways, so I wanted to find some updates with Lucasfilm. Lucasfilm, the one of the most recent things that was retweeted, which is kind of unfortunate. There's not much activity on Twitter, um, which is kind of a good thing, I have to admit. And yeah, uh, Star Wars Theory. That's the, that's the only reason I wanted to mention Star Wars Theory, because it's, it's it pinned, but from 2019. So, if there's any YouTube drama, don't give it a second thought. Don't don't mind yourself if there's uh, somebody who disagrees with one person of like, oh, you're not in support of Gina Carano being canceled, canceled, or oh, you're not speaking up about Gina Carano being canceled. That is irrelevant if someone wants to continue watching Star Wars and uh, the, the 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 universe that is being created. Um, let them. <laughs> That's pretty much it. Um, yeah. So with Disney, again, not much content about uh, what was happening with Gina Carano being canceled, of all the backlash, of all the cancelizations of uh, Disney Plus subscription fee uh, subscriptions. There was major backlash. Uh, it's been a viral thing of Gina Carano's canceling, but we're not seeing anything. That's very unfortunate. They have all their statistics, all of their logistics behind the uh, closed doors. We don't have access to their private information. Usually when a movie would go to the theaters, that would be public information, but now that they have everything behind a a paywall, even if even behind the paywall, it's now private information that only they are going to be releasing what seems to be a best fit. So even if all the information comes out with uh, low record sales, they're going to try to find a way to manipulate that number to make themselves look bigger and better so people have more likelihood to be like oh the disney company is uh doing really good works with uh, with children but 
of all the children that are being harmed by China and da da da. <laughs> That's something else entirely. Don't look behind the curtain, you fool. Silly people. Um, and by the way, that doesn't mean that the, the Pixar or Disney films that are and have been made and will continue to be made, even the, the most recent Disney film, which is S Lara or something of The Last Dragon, looks phenomenal. It's dedicated towards a Chinese audience. I would understand that. They're trying to do business with China because that's where the money's sort of going within the next 10, 20 years. <laughs> that's where you're going to start seeing because they're, they're open, <laughs> China. Um, more so than the United States. And it doesn't mean that the virus is gone. It kind of means that it's overplayed within the United States. Probably blah, 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 blah. So Lucasfilm, try to go for a YouTube channel. What's going on with them? Uh, within the last week, the last day, what they've been posting is uh, Tusk, uh, t pardon the mispronunciation, but Tusk, Tusky, t t Tuskegee, <laughs> Airman Lee Archer on his first aerial victory. I would assume that this is all about Black History Month. It's a good thing that, they're, that it's actually being talked about. Don't get me wrong. I'm just curious why this has, how this has anything to do with Lucasfilm. Isn't this Star Wars? This doesn't feel like Star Wars. <laughs> like, again, as a media company, it would be a good thing to do this. I'm just curious as to where the Star Wars type of franchise... Like, eh, what? Um, because... It's it's so baffling that the current state of Lucasfilm, Star Wars, Disney is going in the direction that they're going. Star, the Star Wars YouTube channel, the most recent thing that they've been pushing is the High Republic. I've read the one chapter, the, the first chapter of the book that they released uh, probably about six months ago. Probably five months or eight months ago. I don't know. It's been a while since I've read it. Most likely it's been three months ago. Um, I read it. Uh, it took about an hour and a half or something because uh, I was commenting along the way. I probably took too much time. I actually got about halfway of the chapter and I couldn't finish it. The thing that was so silly about it is that the main... They, when they were describing the details, to be fair, they were doing a really good job. I believe they were painting a good picture of the scenery, the environment the characters. The issue was the main character, the commander or captain of the ship that was a transport vehicle, they painted the, 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 they painted the picture, I'm going with the paint of the picture analogy, of describing that she prefers to have her old rickety ship because it was true and like, um, it was true to her, she likes the nostalgia of it. She gets into some trouble with the ship and then she blames the ship for not being correct. And the way that I read it, reading it out loud, reading it on, reading it live, what was happening is that the sh the, the, the book. <laughs> oh my gosh! I don't know how to describe this um, without using choice words. She was propped up to not be having any flaw. That's the whole point. She was what's the word a mary sue they were propping her up to be a mary sue and i couldn't watch it the most interesting thing that they could have done is to have a rickety old ship and she even if she blames the ship literally she could do no wrong because all the children loved her on the ship ever all of her uh, everybody on the sh her entire crew it was a very spit spot uh type of uh command that she had over her her crewmen but again, it's like she was painted to be a person that everyone is to love. And if the ship fails, it's not her fault for choosing the ship that she did. It's because the ship failed and it's stupid and it's bad. And she comes out looking like a hero and heroine and it's like, well, wait a second. No, no, no. She chose the ship. This is, wait, what is, what? So that's one of the reasons why I can't get into the High Republic. It's woke SJW. That's just what I'm seeing is that you're going to start seeing some uh, representation for the sake of representation. In Star Wars, there's always been representation. True. Oh, so true. There's been representation of all sorts of, eth um, uh, not ethnicities, but species of every rich guard. There's probably been some bisexuals, gays, asexuals, ones who didn't have form or shape or a race of any sort, and those are the ones that, uh, within the extended universe, even if it was the primary universe, the extended universe had such a high breadth of them. But because of the current state of Lucasfilm, Star Wars, 
Disney, there's a lot of representation for the sake of representation. And if we even go with Pedro Pascal, it's a common thing that you see on Twitter is that uh, you post your pronouns in your Twitter bio. But what Pedro Pascal did, excuse me, yeah, we, I've, I've been eating a lot of chili over the last like few days, <laughs> a lot of chili, so I'm going to be burping and I do apologize. I apologize about that. Pedro Pascal is the main actor of The Mandalorian. He's the one that's wearing the helmet. And he is also in question because he posted a lot of things on Twitter. Uh, the one most notable one is that he posted a meme about any and all Trump supporters, MAGA wearers, MAGA supporters, make America great again, are all literal Nazis. You are attributed to white, uh, whites, the white supremacists, the Confederates, and uh, not Nazis, therefore you're all losers. He didn't get fired. Disney was trying to push uh, Gina Carano out over months. They were replacing her in posters. And then when Gina Carano came out with one of her posters of saying, hey guys, the reason that Jews were able to be rounded up is because we unpersoned and started beating and harming people who we disagreed with, the Jews. That's why the government could come in and round them up without anybody actually doing anything about it. That was happening, and then they canceled her. And it was very attributive to history repeating itself, which is there's a lot of issues with why, why cancel, Disney, uh, cancel Disney Plus went viral. Pedro Pascal was posting a lot of crap as well, but because he to because he has the right of political opinion, therefore he stays in Hollywood, and or he stays employed and is getting a new job with The Last of Us. And we'll just go into a little bit of detail with that bit in a bit in, in a moment. Um, Jeremy from Geeks and Gamers said it said it best, is that there's two there's only two possibilities here that Gina Carano, Gina Carano was fired and nobody cares about that, which is a problem. Nobody cares about it. Nobody's reaching out to her. Nobody's publicly defending her because of this, which is a problem. Or number two, she was fired and people are scared to speak up and defend her about it. That is even a, that's, a, that's I would say, a more, a worse problem. Because if you have a an echo, an echo system, if you if you live in an echo culture of oh you say you you think in what I think and I think what you think oh that's great, that's different than being in a culture where oh I think what you think and you think what I think but the other person actually doesn't but if they say anything they'll be fired. That's worse, I would say. I would agree with Jeremy from Geeks and Gamers. That is a problem, that there is such an echo system happening within Lucasfilm, Star Wars, media companies today, Hollywood and culture, that if you disagree with me, then you are wrong. Liberals and conservatives can come together and say this type of crap is BS. We shouldn't have this. It is wrong. Pedro Pascal, diving, being part of the Twitter culture and putting his pronouns there is very reminiscent of the type of character that he is. Your pronouns should be the least most important thing about you. It shouldn't be something that should be next to your name because we know you're a man. And, <laughs> like, I'm going to call you a he and a him because, A, you look like a man, you sound like a man, you, you are a man. And even if it was a woman who, uh, a female who actually looked like a man, well, guess what? We know that the reason that they changed their physical body is to look more masculine, to look, to have an appearance of testosterone flowing through the bodies that it would be the opposite of having breasts when you remove your breasts and try to make yourself more look like a man even though you might have a vagina. There's very convincing females and males who have switched their quote-unquote gender to make themselves look like the other biological sex. That is the whole difference between those who believe that gender is a construct versus gender is biological. Transgenders who switch themselves like Blair White. Blair White is a great example. She looks like a woman. She sounds like a woman. She looks like a woman. <laughs> and she's, she looks like a woman. <laughs> she's not a woman. She's a man. But when addressing her, when talking to her, again, addressing her in the female, in the, as a female, she is, um, I would say, 
uh, tried to do her best to make herself look like a female. Not because a man just wants to be called a woman. Wait, why? You're not a woman. You, like, it's a great, great question. It's, if you, it's, oh my gosh, if that goes into a rabbit, down a rabbit hole, I don't think I'm probably going to get a win out on the end. <laughs> but let's go with The Last of Us uh, TV series. Because The Last of Us, we, for the majority of people, what I believe would be clicking on this video is that, no, The Last of Us didn't go well. It's not because Joel died. It's because they mishandled Joel dying in the second game. I never played the first game, but when the second game came out, there was no way to not un to not know what was happening with all the videos and content that people were, uh, were posting because it was all about how The Last of Us 2 lied and manipulated their marketing, lied and manipulated how certain scenes were going to play out with certain characters. There was one scene where Joel was talking to Elliot, and or Ellie, and Ellie... I think it's Elliot. I thought it was Elliot. It might be Ellie. Um, I'm gonna go with Elliot. No, Elliot's a boy's name, but I thought it was her name in The Last of Us. In the Last of Us. Okay, we'll go with Ellie. Um, Last of Us. Uh, Joel was talking to Ellie in one scene that was marketed uh, when the release of Oh, we're gonna create a second game. And then in the actual game, Joel was replaced by one of a side one of the side characters that we that is a frequent visitor. That's an issue because you lied to get people. You use nostalgia to get people to come over and like, oh, guys, we have this character in the game. But then you lied about how the character was actually in the game in an incredibly horrible way, incredible, horrible, horrible fashion. It doesn't mean that Joel couldn't have died. There's 10 or 20 ways in which you could probably make it a very acceptable death. You probably even mock them, uh, knock them all down to three possibilities of how Joel dies in the second game. The way he died was very pathetic. The way he died was very, out, I wouldn't say out of character. Um, I think it was, it, it was out of character because we didn't see him be the person he was when he was sharing his name. From my understanding, in the first game, he would never share his information. He would never share where he was going. He would always be a private person. And then five or ten years, however long that it was between uh, The Last of Us 1 to The Last of Us 2, he, he uh, when he gives himself when he gives his name away to the people who he was running away from the zombies from. Um, he's like, oh yeah, my name's Joel. This is my brother, <laughs> and one can argue that he being and living in a uh, in a society, he he lets himself open, and that's why he does it. I would disagree with that because it's too sudden. Because we don't see him be that type of character with other people when he starts releasing all of his private information to other people knowing that he ha knowing the background that he has if we get to see that type of person that he's an incredibly different person for two hours three hours of the film or the film if, for me i watched it didn't play it um the entire storyline i watched i watched the entire walkthrough and many 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 other videos from that if if we got to see joel be more open with other people around the village and that was like a quote-unquote tutorial rather than with ellie we get to do it with uh joel then when he starts communicating to other people maybe he's hesitant to do it but they could trick him and like no no no, no. we know these people in the village and they were lying and then he reveals his information that could be a way of oh that makes more sense i that's more believable so that was just one aspect of the game where they changed his character to suddenly in order to fulfill the plot that they needed and everybody pretty much had plot art if you get shot in the jaw you can live through it apparently it's like no you got shot through the jaw it means that you can live but if you get shot in the jaw and you have nobody around it's going to be very hard pressed for me to believe that you actually made through that um if you got stabbed in the heart i'm going to not believe that you made it through that just because you needed to move on to the next scene <laughs> it's like that doesn't make any sense and then the very lackluster uh a spoiler at the very end you don't kill um whatever her name was della blah blah blah, blah whatever uh, ugh, i don't know what her name is i don't think i care for it <laughs> uh the woman who kills joel or what one might say is a woman <laughs> very questionable about that that so the last of us of creating an hbo 
TV show, uh, knowing how the TV, how the how uh, the Last of Us Two ended, knowing how the entire plot ha- was handled, it's kind of it's kind of like Game of Thrones season eight. Everybody loved Game of Thrones season one through four. People had questions between seasons four to season seven, but they continued watching it even though they had many disagreements about it. And season eight was mismanaged by the producers because they wanted to get the heck out of Dodge and start working on Star Wars products that the they even had narration of their own voices throughout some of the episodes. They made it eight or six episodes when it could have been 12, 10 or 12 episodes. And even George R.R. R. Martin said they could have gone to 12 seasons for, or 15 seasons. I think it was 12 seasons rather than eight. They could have extended it, but they wanted to rush it so they can move on to other things. They were done with it. They were tired of it. They sort of withdrew themselves from it. And that's a big issue. It showed, as an example, how many people have you seen watch the uh, Game of Thrones since the pandemic, since lockdowns hit. I haven't seen one person. I haven't seen one person talk about it, care to talk about it, care to rewatch it. It's not on anybody's radar because of how it ended. The Last of Us 2 is the same way. And the TV series of uh, Game of Thrones of going like a hundred or a thousand years in the in the prior, or that's Lord of the Rings. They're doing another TV series, but they're going to make it woke as hell and have naked ladies, which is, that's nothing to do with Lord of the Rings. Oh, they're going to ruin the series because of that. Not the, if I wanted to see naked ladies, I have porn. There's many websites that I have, and they're bookmarked. Don't you worry. But having a specific media around, it's like it's like it's like having a children's film, and then you put in a naked lady. And then you say, hey, guys, this is for children. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Is it, though? I don't think it is. That doesn't seem right. It seems a little bit more adult than that. Oh, you're stifling their creativity. You must hate women. It's like, no. The context of this, like, um, what was it? Uh, The Witcher. The Witcher TV show. I have many qualms with it. There are many issues of the show. But me liking how the, the potential of the show I was grateful that they tried to honor and respect the characters of, I think it was the books, the original books, and the game, but I think it was more towards the the books themselves rather than the game, and they tried to create an entire atmosphere, character, relationships, even though I disagree. One of the biggest issues that I have with the entire show is that they rushed Yennefer's plot. They could have had her be ugly in her uh, quote-unquote ugly form if for a whole season, maybe two or three. And then the grand reveal of her choosing to capitalize on um, doing what she did to get, gain the power that she, she, she gets. That would have been amazing to even have had at least one season and then maybe the season finale is that is her grand reveal of where she... Of, uh, transforming how she transformed, gaining the power that she did does the whole the whole first season feels rushed. That's one of the biggest issues that I have. One of the biggest issues, not the only bit, not the only issue. I wish they did that differently, but I praise the crap out of it because of what they tried to do. Because intent matters. You having you your care to do something does have a factor in it. Regardless of whether or not many critics online, including myself, might criticize a film, rewatchability is a factor. Regardless of whether or not, oh, did you see the CGI? It looks horrible. Merlin, the TV show, I don't really like the last season. I understand the last season. I, it's kind of an okay, respectable way that they handled it and why they did what they did with some of the episodes. But I'm not necessarily a fan of the last season. Uh, last season of the series. Um, but even going to the CGI part, the first season, even including the second season, but the first season especially, the CGI is horrendous. You can definitely, it's like 1980s graphics type, type of deal. But the characters are enjoyable, the relationships are enjoyable, the atmosphere, it's well paced. I love it. I, it has horrible CGI, but the horrible CGI doesn't make it a bad film. And that's one thing that I dislike about a bunch of critics is that just because you don't like this one part that's objectively wrong, that it doesn't remove it unless you... Th- it's, it's, it's like if that's the case, you can't really watch old movies because they're 
they're old. They don't have the same type of pacing of uh, what what make good or even the newer. Like, I might be putting my foot in my mouth, so I'm just gonna shut up here. <laughs> There's some really good old films. Um, but with The Last of Us, Game of Thrones, the breakout, Bella Ramsey, and Bella Ramsey was originally in Game of Thrones, which is okay. Let's get into the actual article itself. So let's zoom in here. Whoa, that's close. There we go. Craig Mazin, who created HBO's acclaimed limited series Chernob Chernobyl, uh, I haven't I haven't watched it. I'm not caring to watch it. It's not that type of thing that I would love to watch. I think of all the content, of all the comments that I've heard from even my own family who have watched it, it it was it was gut wrenching. Like they, I think they nailed what they were trying to do in showing the horrors of. Uh, wasn't it the nuclear plant that exploded and that's and they were just dealing with all the people around and seeing all the horrors of that nuclear plant um exposing the nuclear radiation and warping people and such that's my understanding of it i might be a little bit wrong if not a lot wrong but they were trying to show the horrors of that and i think they did a really good job from what i heard i didn't want to watch it is writing an executive producing it oh is writing and executive producing with neil Druckmann. I, you know what i actually skipped over that neil Druckmann. oh no <laughs> oh no oh my gosh that's gonna be fun the writer and creative director of the game uh, that's gonna be fun bella ramsey perhaps best known for her breakout role uh, as the fierce lyanne uh, pardon the language uh, pardon the mispronunciation uh lyanna mormont in hbo's game of thrones is reuniting with the cat with the cabler with the cabler to start in the last of us the company's adaptation of the hit video game my thoughts about Bella Ramsey as the actress who was playing the 13, 15 year old uh, queen of her people, uh, Lyanna Mormont, Queen Lyanna Mormont. I thought it was an awesome role. I think she handled herself quite well. I don't like how she ended again in the last season. They mismanaged and mishandled all of that crap. Um, but she did pretty good. I wouldn't say she was great. But at the same time, there's nothing I can really say that was bad about her. Uh, as a preference of, like, do you think pineapple pizza... The, the difference is, like, pineapple pizza, regardless of whether or not you like it or not, cooked pineapple pizza is much different than a doughy mess with pineapples on it. It's like, well, that is what pineapple pizza is. <laughs> like, uncooked dough with pineapples on top versus a cooked layer of uh, pizza with some pineapples on it. It's, guess what? One is objectively, I would say objectively better. Yes, one is cooked, one is edible, one at least has some resemblance of pizza. I might not enjoy it, but it's, I, I don't really have an issue with it in comparison to, you know, being bad. So I don't think that was a good analogy, but we'll move on. Craig Mazin, who created HBO's accla uh, acclaimed limited series for Noble, is pinning the script and executive producing with Neil Druckmann, the writer and creative director of the game. That was the title. I don't know why I pulled that. Anyways, Russian filmmaker. Oh my gosh, that's a that's a word. Kantemir Balagov. Balagov. Bala, Bal, Balagov. Balagov. Balagna. Baloney. Bal, Balagov. The Canis darling behind 2019 drama Pe Beanpole. What are these things these people mention? Has been tapped to direct the pilot. One person not involved in the show is former True Detective star Ma oh my gosh, okay, Mr. or Mrs. Ali, whom Geek websites on Wednesday had pegged as off of having an offer. Ali did circle a role, uh, say sources, but a deal came, uh, ever came to fruition. Last of Us from Sony, Sony and game developer Naughty Dog, which uh, Jeremy from Geeks and Gamers would often say, F Naughty Dog. I would agree to some extent, and what I mean by that is that they really did screw the pooch on misleading their audience to purchase The Last of Us 2, with Neil Druckmann being the producer, and that's my negative involvement with Naughty Dog. I think they're trying to do some good remakes, especially with, I don't know if Crash Bandicoot is still with Naughty Dog. I think that was a success, good job, but it doesn't mean that you're off the hook of what you did with The Last of Us 2. 
took the world by storm when it was released in 2013, winning numerous Game of the Year awards and going to, on to sell more than 17 million copies across both its original release of the PS3 and re-release on the PS4. The game's popularity has only grown since. That is a misleading statement because even though there may have been more people at some, maybe more people purchasing at the, um, uh, in anticipation, it's like the, the Star Wars ep uh, sequel trilogy. People were awaiting Star Wars to come out with a new sequel trilogy. People went in to go w watch The Force Awakens. It felt like Star Wars initially. We were starving for Star Wars. We went in, it felt like Star Wars, unless you started thinking about it. Then The Last Jedi hit, and I think uh, with all the anticipation and all the expectation of, oh, ooh, a new, a new movie, let's go and watch it. More buzz came around it, more people went to the box office, more money was got into it, and I think it got $2 billion worth. And then they did the last, um, and then the, la uh, the Rise of Skywalker came, and I think they lost half of their audience because nobody cared about Star Wars anymore. Even though it had, I think, about a billion in sales, which is record numbers, don't get me, don't, don't get me wrong, record numbers, they lost a whole heck of a lot of audience members, even though it's record numbers, that doesn't mean that the popularity has grown since. Popularity, in, in, in all honesty, I haven't seen the game's popularity grow. I haven't seen videos defending The Last of Us other than people trying to defend it, just like the, the, Rise, of, um, the Rise of Skywalker, uh, The Force Awakens, and The Last Jedi. It, I, yeah, so I think this is incredibly misleading. Uh, Pedro Pascal joins Bella Ramsey in the star of HBO's Last of Us, and that's kind of an issue because Pedro Pascal does not look like the type of actor. What would be best, from what I've heard, and I agree, Hugh Jackman. Hugh Jackman would have been a, is would have been a great Joel. Logan, the movie, which you know I still haven't seen. It's it's I'm not really a fan of. Mm, what's the word? <laughs> great movies. <laughs> no, no, no. What's the what's the word? Hmm, it's, I would say the word would be not nihil, that's not nihilistic at all. No, 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 I'm using the wrong word. It kind of has a bittersweet moment, like it's sort of, it's just, we're done. Excuse me, Logan was the last Mutants film, was the last X-Men film. I think the, uh, from what I've heard, it was a really good way of ending the entire series. Uh, Logan was losing his powers and his, and then eventually everything passed on to the next generation, even though there were only, I think, three of them that were still mutants. So, yeah. I th Again, Hugh Jackman would be a great uh, Joel rather than Pedro Pascal just by the uh, face, al face alone and how they handle themselves when it comes to that type of character. It doesn't mean that Pedro Pascal cannot act. I would just prefer Hugh Jackman if they were going to go balls to the walls. The story, set 20 years after modern civilization has been destroyed, centers on the relationship between Joel, a smuggler in, the new, in this new world, and Ellie, a teenager who may be the key to a cure for a deadly pandemic. Joel, a hardened survivor, is hired to smuggle the 14-year-old girl out of, the, of an oppressive quarantine zone. What starts as a small job soon becomes a brutal, heartbreaking journey as they traverse the U.S. and depend on each other for survival. But again, the question is, are they going to be playing the original TV series when it comes to the game, the first game? Is it going to be an extension or in between the first game and the second game? I would say this is the first game, but I'm curious as to why they're doing that. Are they trying to go back to their roots? Or are they going to try to push out The Last of Us 2 and say, oh, that never happened? Because that's the, eventually where all this goes, which is very unfortunate. If I know the ending, some uh, movies that you're able to rewatch. The reason that people rewatch movies and TV series are not because they know the ending. They respect and like how the ending is. That's why I can go through the beginning and the middle. So I don't I am curious as to why anybody would go and watch this movie even though I think it will probably be an okay series, but it is an issue because we know how in the game if they're going to be basing the TV series off of the game or they're going to mo be moving around the topic of the second game trying to do it in a different way if that's the case I would say good job you swallowed your pride and I think you're on the right track the issue is I don't think that's what's going to be happening 
knowing media m media today, especially with Lord of the Rings, they're going to try to make everybody nude. <laughs> was, like, I think there's only going to be one nude scene, and they're going to try to have a very blatant homophobic, uh, homophobic, uh, <laughs> racist, bigot, homophobic, neo-Nazi, white supremacist. <laughs> they're going to have um, uh, uh, a very blatant homosexual person on the show, and that shouldn't matter at all. It's a very traditional uh, RPG fantasy world. You can have a very blatant one, but one of the issues that I have is that they're making it a selling point for the show rather than having the character be a character on the show. It's it's weird to see an article that says, oh my gosh, this guy's straight. It's like, why does that matter? So it's as equally awkward if somebody says, oh my gosh, there's a gay person. It's like, what does that matter? <laughs> like, who are you trying to convince here? Like, why don't you just have a good show? Why don't you have a good story that's in this same realm of the fantasy world in which that was created and then honor and respect those characters and the world itself and you can create your own story you just abide by what the rules of the world has laid out so and they're doing a prequel for uh, for game of thrones as well so media today entertainment i don't think is going to be overarchingly great but there's going to be some diamonds in the roughs and i really hope that those things do shine out do shine and stand out Ramsey will be pl will play Ellie, a fourteen year old orphan who has never known anything but a ravaged planet, and who struggles to balance her instinct for anger and defiance with her need for connection and belonging, as well as a newfound reality that she may be the key to saving the world. The series is co as a co production with Sony's Pictures Television, PlayStation Productions, World Games, The Mighty Mint, and game developer Naughty Naughty Dog. F Naughty Dog, <laughs> I'm with you, Jeremy. <laughs> uh, produce. Also executive producing as Carolyn Strauss, Naughty Dogs, Evan Wells, and Ashad, people I don't care about, Carter Swan, whoever that person is, on PlayStation Productions. Ramsey, 17, in Real World, which one of the things that was brought to my attention is that you are not allowed to make, make fun of an actress or actor if they are below the age of 18. So my criticism towards the, towards the actress, other than her acting, personally must be withheld so i yeah if somebody acts and it's like you know i didn't believe that <laughs> for example the the actor who played what's it what's the uh deadpool 2 the main quote unquote not villain um but the the kid that starts fires that kid can't act he can't and i saw him in another movie the the what was it called the Christmas Chronicles 2, he's actually in that film as well. I think the entire film as a whole is a very campy, very silly show, but the plot is kind of cringe because it's like, oh, shouldn't this entire place, because everything was created by Mrs. Santa Claus, shouldn't this be called Mrs. Santa's Cla uh, Mrs. Claus um, Workshop or something? It's like, okay, I see what you're doing there. <laughs> oh, it's so on the nose. It's so eye-rolling. Uh, in, eye rolling inducing eye roll induce, inducing yeah there we go so Ramsey of 17 skyrocketed to fame after her fierce portrayal of Lyanna Mormont in HBO's Emmy winning fantasy drama The Game of Thrones which again it doesn't matter if it's Emmy winning fantasy the entire series is not talked about anymore because of how they handled season 8 it was great up until season 7 I would argue that some of the scenes one scene in particular the bombing of everybody, spoilers for anybody who hasn't seen it, the bombing of using those barrels uh, to bomb everybody in that, uh, I, the religious zealot people, I thought that was a very choice moment because even though, I don't care about the characters' and names anymore, so who's the woman? <laughs> who's that woman person who's the queen at the end? Um, the, the, the woman lady, gosh, I'm blinking on her name, whatever her name is, uh, she was tortured, essentially, yes, absolutely tortured by and abused and mocked and ridiculed by all the uh, the people who were being manipulated by the by the the religious peoples uh, for episodes. That was it was very heart wrenching because I started relating with the character, even though she's a horrible human being. But we get to see some human level with her, and then she exacts, she she takes her revenge, and she claims power through the process. To be honest, that is awesome. 
Um, it doesn't mean that she's a good person because she does it. It doesn't mean that she's moral because she does what she does. It's very understandable as to, oh, as a as what you did to me, I'm gonna I'm you're just gonna be wiped out from the planet. You're gone. <laughs> oh, okay, cool. That was neat. <laughs> so again, nobody cares about the series anymore because of how season eight handled the entire plot. So why would I want to watch season one knowing what how it's gonna end is season eight? The, uh, it's one of the reasons why I don't want to watch Burn Notice, <laughs> because it's not that they handled the plot wrong. They make my heart hurt so bad for what happens in the last season that I don't want to watch the last season because I know how it ends. It's so sad. It's not that I think it's bad or horrible. I think it's it handles the entire plot in a very, like, that's the way it sort of should end. I don't think you could do it a different way, but I hate the fact that it ends that way. It makes me feel bad. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, the role marked. Uh, the the role marked her acting debut. She's repped uh, by blah 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 blah. So CBR, uh, why is The Last of Us Two so divisive? Uh, one little proof as to why things are the way they are in entertainment is that this one article from June 22nd of 2020, CBR posted this quote, and it's only up to the first paragraph after this that I only need to point out the ridiculousness of how people unironically look at the world, specifically within culture and what may be the predominant narrative. That was actually a very well articulated sentence. I have to pat myself on the back. That was pretty good. So why is The Last of Us 2 so divisive? The Last of Us 2 has received both universal praise from critics and near universal criticism from gamers. Here's why people are so split. First paragraph. Uh, hopefully it's the right paragraph that I'm thinking of. If it has to go further than that, wait, is it, which one is it? Uh-oh, did I lose it? I don't know, let's go to the first one. <laughs> Naughty Dog is famous for producing masterpieces. However, The Last of Us two, Part 2 may be the studio's first title that some gamers consider to be actually uh, to actually be bad. Even for uh, even before the game released on Friday, uh, people's opinions on the sequel began to sour once more information surrounding the plot had been leaked. The thing is is that the entire thing had been leaked. That's the funny part about it. You know, what, let me get to the actual quote, it's, quote itself cuz I'm actually you know, I read this. I'm just trying to think of where... Oh, right here. Okay, so it's the third third paragraph. Some of this can be attributed to bots. So what do you mean by some? Let's go to the second sentence. Although initially uh, scathing opinions coming from people with no context could be ignored. Now that gamers have had a chance to play all the way through The Last of Us Part 2, that the shockingly low user scores can no longer be overlooked, despite receiving a wealth of criticism, uh, critical praise from various reputable outlets, which again, just because you're a critic doesn't mean that uh, your, your opinion is valid, because often people who are critics who are connected to big companies like this, if you say something positive about this game, will continue can giving you exclusive offers will continue giving you rewards and benefits which is one of the biggest issues as to what is the financial structure what is the financial incentive of somebody not giving a full honest review well they're going to tweak it because they would like the, the financial incentive would be hey i want to be still connected to this company because they're going to give me some stuff that's just how the game is played it's kind of how politics goes what's the financial incentive of people telling the truth in politics one, everybody's a lawyer, and they always play with, this, with the word of the law, not the spirit of the law, so they always bend the law to their favor, regardless of what side of the aisle that you're on. And number two, if I keep quiet about something bad, uh, everybody will just blame everybody else, so I'll just skate through and make, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars. Wow, that seems pretty good. <laughs> so it seems the gaming community at large has a very different opinion. Uh, but why exactly has The Last of Us Part Two proved to be so divisive? And it's this paragraph that says everything. Some of this can be attributed to bots and a vocal minority of homophobic gamers review bombing The Last of Us Part Two for including a strong, visible LGBT-led uh, lead in Ellie. Okay, so I just want to point out, because the LGBT Q A A I P I Parstrophe Z Y X Z. There's a 
the the main character's a woman so if you criticize something with her in it therefore you hate women if i have a criticism about kamala harris as the vice president because of her horrendous actions as a district attorney prosecutor in her past life before being a president a vice president where or soon to be future president because joe biden's gonna have to step down at some point and she's gonna be a default president which is hilarious because she won the vice presidency because of a racial quota of an immutable characteristics we need a we need a woman and a woman of color um so she won the role even though she got one percent of all the democratic uh, from the Democratic Convention in 2018, she only got 1% of the votes. But yet, she's won 80 million of the votes in America? That makes no sense to me. It doesn't. But apparently I must hate the gays. <laughs> I must hate the women's. <laughs> if I point out any of that crap. Oh, man. It, it, that, this is the whole point. The way that you look at the world has every... When we even go back to Pedro Pascal putting his pronouns onto his Twitter feed, on his Twitter page, that type of crap really does say everything about your type, your type of character. Because if you care more about the immutable characteristics of something, which, to be honest, I love myself a very strong black woman. I mean, to be fair, a tall black woman, very feminine black woman, that is my... my, my, my ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> I love it. I'm getting all goosebumps. <laughs> that touches... That tickles me pink. <laughs> it tickles me on the insides. Get it? The inside! <laughs> and some ask me why I'm single. <laughs> well, let me tell you, ladies... <laughs> Oh God, I'm so alone. <laughs> so no, no, nobody. T no shoulder to cry on. Oh, what was me? <laughs> I want to read this one quote again because this is so telling about the type of character of people who unironically look at the world. It has to be this. Some of this can be attributed to bots and a vocal minority of homophobic gamers review bombing. Again, homophobic gamers. It has to be that they're homophobic. Let's assume there are homophobic gamers. There are also some people who are very sick and tired of woke crap being in entertainment that, hey guys, did you know that there's a gay character playing Batwoman? Hey, she's gay. Well, to be fair, the Batman, ba uh, Bad Blood, I think is the title of the animated movie, of the DC mo movie. It went directly to DVD. Uh, yeah, Batwoman is gay in that film. And guess what? She's kind of badass. Uh, she does have a homosexual relationship, but guess what? It's literally mentioned and shown like twice in the entire movie. It has an almost nothing to do with the entire plot. And I think it's a pretty cool uh, plot line. I don't want to give anything away about that, and I highly recommend going and watching it. That's just my opinion, and I guess not. And don't worry, guys, I'm correct. <laughs> like, <laughs> what I say is law. <laughs> Part of the Red Sea, everybody. I'm coming through. <laughs> so, um, of homophobic gamers review bombing The Last of Us Part 2 for including a strong, visible LGBT lead in Ellie. Again, it's so weird. However, the full story is far more complicated. When looking at specific low user reviews, a few primary criticisms emerge. Oh, it's amazing. It's hilarious. It's, but this is how they unironically lead. It's like, what about the plot? Why is the plot bad? Why is that plot not the reason or why Joel dying, um, how it was managed or mismanaged, why is that not the first thing? It's how you look at the world. And if you unironically look at the world this way, I'm sorry, but you're not a good person to be around. You might have some great ideas. You might be a great friend. But in all honesty, this is one of the reasons why people are suffering in some regard I, I know i'm probably being hyper hyperbolic and incredibly outlandish but let me give an example as to what i mean and put what i said into context when somebody says to you hey i don't have enough money in the bank and then that or when when somebody says to another person i don't have enough money in the bank and then that person says man doesn't it suck that your boss is getting all that money well we, and then the person says, yeah, that's stupid. 
A, you've already undercut all the actions you could have done to change your income because it's somebody else's fault. B, you blame somebody for being successful regardless of whether or not that, that, that position is justified. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't, but the fact that they are making a bunch more money, therefore you've undercut the position of having more money, so why would this person try to go out and get more money? Not saying that getting more money would actually fix more problems, but there are rich people problems and poor people problems. Rich is better. Having, a, having too much food in your fridge, in your refrigerator, that you have to throw food away because it went bad versus not having enough money in the food and not having enough food in the refrigerator and you and you're hungry that night which is better yeah having more food that you can handle it's an unfortunate thing that you have to throw out food that you paid money for but guess what i'd rather have food in the fridge that goes that spoils versus having not enough food in the fridge and i go hungry i don't want i don't i hate throwing away food i paid for it that's money <laughs> that's time <laughs> like that was stuff that ha that I had to that had to trade for that so your your personality that comes out it's not there's many criticisms about all things but when you unironically look at the world and say vocal minority of homophobic gamers and that be the one of the biggest issues that you put it in front that if somebody has an issue with woke uh, woke entertainment and saying I'm very sick and tired of having a homosexual being the very lead of something because all they care about is the homosexual part not the she's a good character because of X Y and Z that's I would say a very valid criticism I'm tired of somebody saying hey here's an immutable characteristic and that's the reason why I'm in front because that would be weird if somebody said hey guys I'm a man and I love vagina I'm awesome. The other guy's like, yeah, vagina. I'm like, that's weird, dude. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, yeah, <laughs> it is. But when you start talking about like, hey, guys, did you, how much sex did you have? It's like, D wait, what? What is, wait, what? All right. Um, I mean, today I was creating a fantasy world, but it's like, hey, I had sex. It's like, it's, 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 it feels so superficial. I think I'm using the wrong example. <laughs> it's like, I need friend. I need a life, guys. <laughs> like, this is a fact, and it can't be ignored any longer. <laughs> I will wag my finger until the cows come home. But don't worry, I'm in the, in the middle of the city, so... Am I in the middle of the city? I am in a city, and I am what one might consider a city if they weren't alive. <laughs> so... Try to think about that and try to come up with an answer. So I'll, I'll be I'll be pondering about this for not that long, and I'm done. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I think we got one more. Ah, oh, Gina Carano, and then we're just recycling all the all the tabs. So that's what I got to say. Thank you very much for sticking it all the way to the end. I have to give you credit and I have to applaud you and you're an amazing human being. And it's because you being an amazing human being that you're an amazing human being. And don't you forget it because you're an amazing human being. Amazing person be you and today. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, <laughs> with that being said, please post your comments, questions, and concerns right down below because I want to hear from you and it also helps the YouTube algorithm. Please hit that like, share, and subscribe button because that would go greatly help this channel out. And most importantly, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day or your evening, your night, your sleep, all those little Betty buys that you're going to be having. It's going to be so cuddly and sweet and that's why you're amazing. <laughs> you better remember it. <laughs> Oh, thank you for being thank you very much for being a part of this and I'll see you uh, next time Sunday 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 Boom, beep